my name is Martin Schumpf. I'm a grad student in Chimney Carlos Lab and the MIT Burning Cognitive Sciences Department. And in Chimps Lab, we mainly focus on modeling the primate visual ventral stream, which is the part of our brains that does object recognition. And we've developed some, some tools and methods that uh, we always thought would go beyond just vision. Uh, so in this work, we try to take those tools and push them to something that is maybe a bit more cognitive, and namely that is human language processing. In vision and sensory errors more broadly, we've recently had a lot of success using deep neural networks. So that is networks that are trained usually with lab probation, uh, have many layers that transform input, in this case pixels, into some representations that you can then perform object recognition out of. And th those deep networks are able to predict new representations as well as behavioral outputs to a reasonable first extent. Yeah, so I guess this was uh, now about three years ago um, when Martin and Josh uh, Tenenbaum have started discussing the idea of applying the kinds of approaches that have been highly successful in vision to the domain of language. And I thought it was absolutely crazy. I was certain that this would not work. Um, but on the other hand, I was also kind of um, getting stuck in my research because it was unclear to me how to go beyond the descriptive verbal hypotheses of what these brain regions that we've been studying are doing. And of course, ultimately, we want to understand what the representations are that they build as we process input, what are the computations that they um, perform. So in any of kind of modeling the brain work, I think there's always two sides. On the one side, you have the models. In this case, these are uh, transformer-based models such as GPT and BERT, as well as LSTM and Glowference from the natural language processing community. So basically models from machine learning or AI more broadly. And on the other side, there are experimental data, uh, brain recordings. So in this case, fMRI and ECOG recordings as subjects listen to sentences and stories. So what we then do is essentially we run the same experiment on the model by presenting the same kinds of stimuli, so sentences and stories, to the models, uh, and then capture internally what kinds of representations that they build. And then we test how similar those representations internally to the model are to the new recordings that we obtain experimentally. And that gives us a score that tells us how close are the models uh, to predicting those data. And in this case, what we found is that uh, remarkably, the model is actually pretty close to the experimental noise ceiling in a lot of the data sets that we tested. In contrast to earlier attempts to model human language processing, which has been typically to take a single model and to see how well it captures behavioral or neural responses, here Martin took a whole range of high-performing language models and looked for trends, looking at why is it that some models may perform better than others in capturing human neural responses. And a critical um, result that came out of this is that models that do better in their ability to predict an upcoming word in a text, which is a critical training objective for these models, um, also best capture human neural data. And it's not just the case that bigger models do better on this test, because you can take a um, random word embedding of the same dimensionality, and that does quite poorly, suggesting that it's something about the architecture, um, the structure of the model. Um, and it's not just any language task that predicts the fit to human neural data. For example, judging how grammatically well formed the sentences does not lead to better fit to human neural data. So that suggests that perhaps optimizing for predictive linguistic representations is a shared objective of both biological and artificial language models. One thing I find fascinating with this work and the results we have is that we really discovered a lot of relationships that I find quite crucial. So one, models that are better predicted than expert are also better able to predict neural responses in human brains. But then the models that are better able to predict neural responses are also better models of behavior, in this case, self-paced reading times. And then again, models that are better at predicting the next word also better predict human reading times. So we're really able to sort of bring these three things together of a normative task, neurons, as well as behavior. Because really we don't study neurons for the sake of neurons, but rather because there's some behaviors they support. Given this a fairly simple behavior, but going forward, we tried, we're planning to take a lot of different neural data sets as well as behavior data sets from labs worldwide put them together on a platform, like we already have brain score and vision, maybe there's gonna be a brain score for language, and then make this accessible to the community and work with the community to really constrain and guide the next generation of models that can be built for human language processing. There is a bunch of exciting directions uh, going forward. So um, one important thing is to try to uh, make our data better. Um, even though you'll hear many people say these days that we're drowning in data, 
the kinds of data that you need um, for building these precise models of what's happening as you're processing a particular visual stimulus or a particular sentence are very different kinds of data than what we've been collecting for the last uh, couple of decades. And so we're pushing on this front by collecting the highest quality data using intracranial recordings and selecting uh, sentences in ways that would allow us to best discriminate among different models or among layers of a particular model and so on. Another important direction is to try to understand why untrained models do so well in capturing human neural responses. This is a surprising finding, but there's now some similar findings that have been um, observed in vision. So something about the information flow through these units is already well suited for capturing something about how our brains process language. So one possibility is to now create minimal pair comparisons of models varying in particular aspects of architecture to see which features, which architectural motifs are critical for leading to this uh, good predictivity with uh, human, neural, of human neural data. And finally, the ultimate goal is of course to build integrated models of the human brain. And for language specifically, the downstream target of the language system is presumably the system that supports structured thought. And just like there's been advances um, in natural language processing and developing these very successful language models, there is parallel ongoing efforts to develop models of structured thought, reasoning, common sense reasoning, or reasoning about um, logical inferences and so on. Now that we've made some progress in relating language models to human neural responses, hopefully we can do something like that for models of structured thought and then understand how um, human language understanding happened in its full complexity. So while this now lays a pretty critical foundation of having some first models that predict even any kind of uh, variance in the data, and in this case, even uh, a remarkable amount, I don't think this means that we're anything close to being done. Uh, it just means that we now are encouraged to collect even better data or even more constraining data that then pushes the models uh, to become even closer matches to the brain's language system.